and for new and another, my name is Jamie and I'm super excited to share my thoughts on the Google Pixel tablet. Almost just as excited as I was when there was an announce and I just had to get my hands on it. I felt it like it offered a lot of unique features outside of tablet abilities that would be perfect for my home. Now I did initially unbox this a couple of weeks ago and I just really wanted to spend some time with the tablet. And if you've been a subscriber of the channel for some time, you'll know that I've owned and used a variety of different iPads because there's certainly a variety of different iPads to choose from, but essentially they all do the very same thing so I can review and discuss them relatively quickly. But when it comes to other brands, I really like to do my due diligence as an average consumer to better understand not just the hardware, but the software as well. But I suppose we should really just start off with the unboxing experience. And aside from my Google Nest Wi-Fi router, this is the only Google product I've ever unboxed. And I gotta say, it was super clean and minimal. You do have three color options to choose from. You have the porcelain, rose, and hazel. I do think they should have had a darker color option like in their phone lineup. I believe they call it obsidian, but I had to go with the porcelain because I really like the clean and minimum look. Now the minimum configuration is 128 gigabytes of storage, so that's what it comes with, or you could actually double it for $100 more and you'll get 256 gigabytes of storage. And the leading factor what makes this tablet so unique is that it comes included with this docking station that can not only be used to just charge or store your tablet when not in use, but it also doubles out as a speaker. Now I've been testing it here down in the studio, but I do intend for this to go upstairs to my main living area so that anyone in the home could have access to it at any time. And I don't actually recommend this if you're just looking for a home hub. There are plenty of other inexpensive options if that's what you're looking for, but it is nice that it doubles as a clock or rotates through your Google Photos when not in use. And I don't wanna really get into the software just yet, but it does offer multi-user support so anyone in your home could have their own profile while maintaining their own privacy. But let's go ahead and circle back to the unboxing experience as it does charge via USB-C, but one of those are not included in the box. In fact, the only charging cord that's in the box is the one to actually charge the dock. Now it's not a deal breaker, but I was actually somewhat surprised that one was not included. The tablet itself feels amazing to hold. It does look a little bit plasticky, but it's not. Google calls it a nano ceramic coating, which gives us this nice cool to touch when it's in your hands. And it also has a matte like finish. You'll also notice the four prongs in the back that are used to smart connect to your dock. And the magnetic connection is pretty solid. I find that I only need to use one hand to guide it where it needs to go and it just attaches but you'll definitely need two hands to safely detach it from the dock itself. The bezels of the 11 inch display on the porcelain are actually white, which I personally enjoy. The other thing I've actually been enjoying the four built-in speakers on this tablet, perfect for what I've been using it for, which is just primarily YouTube when it's not in its docking station. Along the top, you'll also notice that it has volume controls and a power button that also supports Touch ID. It also has eight megapixel front and rear facing cameras, as well as built-in microphone. How do I sound? And lastly, as far as hardware is concerned, it doesn't have an IPS panel with a 16 by 10 ratio. I do find that this is great when you're utilizing it in landscape, unlike let's say the iPad, it's its intended orientation. But when you do try to use it in portrait for let's say shorts, it does look a little bit awkward, thin and narrow on the sides. But I'm not complaining, I'll take a landscape tablet all day. Its peak brightness does reach 500 nits and its refresh rate is 60 hertz, which again, makes it great for viewing content. One thing that I do find is a little bit lacking, I totally get it, the first generation of this product are additional accessories. Now, personally, this is not a tablet that I would use in a case keyboard trackpad combo, but it might be nice if there were one available. Although Google does offer other styles of tablet cases, one of which even allows you to make still magnetically connect it to the dock, which is great if you do want to hand it off to children. Although it'll also be great to see what third party companies were able to create. Let's say maybe a stylus. But let's go ahead and move under the hood because this guy is equipped with a G2 Tensor chip along with eight gigabytes of RAM. And Google does promise up to five years of software updates, which is great to see that it is pretty future proof, not only for software updates, but security updates as well. I'll be honest, I don't find myself using it all day. I don't use any tablet all day, but it is quoted to have up to 12 hours of battery life. Speaking of battery life, since it might find itself docked to this docking station for a large portion of the day, it does use a technology called smart charging, which helps conserve the overall battery health of your device over time. So it doesn't become burnt out, worn out and need to be replaced, which I think is super smart. I will say that there's a little bit of a learning curve since I do primarily come from iPad OS, but I did find that most of the apps that I need are found in the Google Play Store, including Apple Music. 
but I've actually been taking advantage of my YouTube premium subscription and using YouTube music with this and my other Windows devices. Ultimately, as a Pixel newbie, I did find the experience to be fluid and intuitive and not at all clunky or confusing. Kind of makes me want to get my hands on a Pixel phone, to be honest. Ultimately, that's what I think what any device or company needs to have is a wide range of products building out a whole ecosystem so that way those Apple people don't feel like they're missing out. And I think the Pixel tablet's a great step in that direction. Appreciate you for making it all the way to the end of this video. If there are any lingering questions, be sure to leave them down below the like button, subscribe if you haven't, and until next time, see ya.